shut off the nitrogen or dry air source. Then close the product discharge valve on the tank car. Wait about a minute. Then open the product discharge valve to blow the unloading hose clear to the storage tank. Be careful not to overpressurize the receiving tank during the hose clearing operation. After the hose is cleared, close the product discharge valve on the tank car and the valve on the receiving line. Then open the bleed valve to depressurize the unloading hose. Make sure you collect any excess product in a catch container that contains a neutralizing solution. Now close the bleed valve. Once this has been completed, the unloading hose should be carefully disconnected from the tank car and, if necessary, from the receiving line. A catch container should be used under the ends of the hose to capture any product drippage. The ends of the hose should be capped and plugged immediately after disconnection. Remove the fitting from the tank car discharge valve and install the closure plug. Recheck to see that the tank car is still pressurized with 5 to 10 PSIG of nitrogen or dry air. This will assure that moisture will not enter the tank car and react with the residual TDI on the return trip. Next, depressurize and carefully disconnect the dry air or nitrogen hose from the tank car's inlet valve. Remove the fitting from the tank car's nitrogen valve and install the closure plug. Finally, remove the thermometer from the thermal well, close the valve if there is one present, and install the closure cap. Check all valves to verify they are fully closed, and all closure plugs to verify they are wrench tight. Close the valve cover hatch, install the securement pin, and apply a tamper evident seal for the return trip. The U.S. DOT requires that any spilled material or product residue must be removed from the tank car's exterior surface prior to it being offered for return shipment. Complete the checklist to ensure that the rail tank car is properly prepared for return shipment. If there are any defects that must be corrected before the car can be returned or before the car is loaded for the next shipment, notify the supplier. Finally, Remove the wheel chock, blue flag, and derail. Return the paperwork to the receiving office, and if there are no defects, notify appropriate personnel that the empty tank car is ready for return. In this section, we have discussed the recommended procedures for unloading toluene diisocyanate from rail tank cars, including preparation for unloading, documentation, regulatory information, pre-unloading procedures, personal protective equipment, connecting procedures, transfer operations, disconnecting procedures, and preparation for return. If you have any further questions or are unsure of the actions required of you, ask your supervisor or team leader, or contact the product manufacturer for more information on the topics covered in this section, consult the following literature developed by the Center for the Polyurethanes Industry, Model Respiratory Protection Program, Equipment Guidelines for Diisocyanate Storage Tanks, TDI User Guidelines for Protective Clothing Selection, TDI Transportation Guidelines, Working with TDI, What You Should Know. Toluene diisocyanate is shipped in a variety of packages to customers all over the world. Almost all shipments make it to their intended destination without incident, and most are transferred without a drop being spilled. But regardless of how carefully procedures are followed, emergencies do occur. If this happens, it's important that you respond in the appropriate manner. In this section, we will discuss emergency response to a TDI spill within a facility, as well as disposal procedures. 
The best time to think about how to respond to an emergency situation is not when the emergency is taking place. An emergency response plan must be in place before handling TDI. The emergency response plan will give you the information you need to control a release of TDI, prevent injury to yourself or your coworkers, or damage to the environment. In addition to your facility's emergency response plan, some manufacturers may supply their own in-house emergency response telephone numbers and contacts in case of an incident involving a spill, leak, or damage. All TDI producers are registered with Chemtrek, the Chemical Transportation Emergency Center established by the American Chemistry Council. Chemtrek is staffed 24 hours a day, seven days a week, toll-free at 1-800-424-9300 and is available to provide emergency response information. A call to Chemtrek will provide first action advice on handling procedures for emergencies involving TDI and they will also make contact with the manufacturer. Providing accurate information to Chemtrek is imperative in order to receive correct response information. It is important to identify the product by its trade name. All producers of TDI have response capabilities and can provide assistance if requested. If a package arrives at your facility and is leaking, follow your company's emergency plan or call the product manufacturer for assistance. In the event of an incident, only trained and qualified individuals should be allowed into the spill area. Never approach a spill without the appropriate personal protective equipment, including an approved air-supplied positive pressure breathing apparatus. In order to control the spill, the first action is to stop the flow of product from the source. This should only be done if it can be accomplished safely. If you puncture a drum with a forklift, leave the forks in the drum and obtain assistance to clean up the spill. Spilled TDI must not be allowed to flow into drains or sewers. To stop the spread of the spilled material, use absorbent materials such as vermiculite, sawdust, clay earth, sweeping compound, or sand to create a barrier around the spill or the inlet to the sewer or drain. Depending on the size of the incident, spill pillows or other containment materials may be used to prevent further spreading of the product. Once the spill has been stopped, absorbed, pumped off, or removed from the receiving surface, and there is no chance of further spread of the product, the area must be decontaminated with an appropriate neutralizing agent. Consult the product manufacturer's MSDS or contact the product manufacturer for neutralizing solution recommendation. The neutralizing solution, as well as the absorbent material, should be prepared ahead of time and be readily available should an emergency arise. Apply the neutralizing solution over the entire spill area. The recommended ratio for thorough decontamination is 10 parts of neutralizing solution to one part spilled material. Once the neutralizing solution has been applied, cover the area with additional absorbent material. Spread the absorbent material around to aid in contact between the surface and the neutralizing solution. Then shovel all of the absorbent material into a metal drum. Apply neutralizing solution again to ensure adequate decontamination. Place the lid loosely on the drum and move it to a well-vented area in case further reaction occurs. Do not tighten the lid because dangerous pressures may result from the neutralization process. Carbon dioxide gas is generated through the neutralization process, so the drum should be monitored frequently and the lid should not be securely applied until the reaction is complete. All protective equipment must be disposed of properly or thoroughly cleaned and decontaminated after use. Any waste material that has been generated during spill cleanup must be disposed of in accordance with federal, state, and local regulations. TDI is a hazardous waste, listed as U-223 under the Resource Conservation and Recovery Act. Depending upon the circumstances and the amount of the spillage, federal, state, and local agencies may have to be notified. 
Of course, your company's own hazardous materials team or outside contractor will be able to judge this. Containers used for waste disposal must be labeled in accordance with DOT and EPA waste regulation. After the product has fully reacted and prior to disposal, tighten the lid on the drum securely. Always check with regulatory authorities for proper disposal procedures. In this section, we have discussed the recommended procedures for emergency response to a TDI spill, as well as disposal procedures. If you have any further questions or are unsure of the actions required of you, ask your supervisor or team leader or contact the product manufacturer. For more information on the topics covered in this section, read the following literature developed by the Center for the Polyurethanes Industry, Model Respiratory Protection Program, TDI User Guidelines for Protective Clothing Selection, Working with TDI, What You Should Know, Guidelines for Responsible Disposal of Waste and Containers from Polyurethane Processing,